Hello everyone, this is David, and today I'm going to be reacting to KZ Tandigan um, doing all performances on The Singer 2018. Uh, just like I did with uh, Fourth Impact, my first Fourth Impact, Fourth Power reaction. Anyways, let's get right into it.
You know what I like about this show, Singer? With this competition. I mean, with this competition, the singer is allowed to sing the entire song. I mean, it's not just, it's not just, um, you know, 90 seconds or two minutes. You get to sing the whole song. American singing sh competitions. You need to start doing this. You need to start doing it. Now, obviously, I've already reacted to her doing Rolling in the Deep before, that, but that was on the Wish Bus. So, this is a true live performance in front of lots of people, including judges. And uh, I think she did a wonderful job. It had a bit of a different feel to it than uh, the one in the Wish Bus, um, but still similar. You know, it had a lot of elements in it. She had that electronic voice um, modulation thing happening there at the beginning. Um, you know, what I like to call the T-Pain effect. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, and that was very cool. Like, I'm gl as with as like on the Wish Bus perform perform performance. I'm glad she didn't stick with that the whole time because that would have uh, probably gotten stale a little bit. But uh, yeah, and she killed that. Like, um, I mean, like she she infuses so many different styles into this. Like, you have pop, you have rock, you have jazz, you have you have R and B, you have soul, you have you have a little bit of rap and hip hop in there. I mean, come on. And she was she she was spitting out them she was she was spitting out the words yo, like uh, she was spitting some lyrics, <laughs> like for real. Like uh, she did the same in in her, in her wish bus performance, but it's more impressive here, because first of all, I couldn't hear anything that was out of tune or off key or anything, and um, this is during a live performance. It's very hard to be that technically good when you're doing a live performance. Because, you know, there's the energy of the crowd. Um, you know, there there's the, there, there's the nervousness you're feeling, which um, you know, will might get you to like um overshoot a note or something or, you know, go faster than the beat, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's so many things. And like um Okay, let, let's let's put it this way. It's different when you're the main singer. She's the main singer. She's the main singer, and um, it's basically mostly on her. So when you're the main singer, the main attraction, that's going to be much more difficult to control your nervousness than like if you're just in the band or like a background singer, because you're not up front. You're not what people are seeing. But with her, everyone is watching her. So, like, that that's very difficult. Like, I don't think I could ever go on to a, sh a show like this with, like, a live audience like that. It's like, nope, 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 not happening. And, uh, let me tell you. The cool thing about her is that she, she's her own hype man. <laughs> she is. Like, like. 
most 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 singing artists, most singers, that rap part, that that hype, that hyped up part, they're gonna get someone else to do that. She's like, nah, I got this, I got this. But anyway, so let's keep going. I just want to thank him for everything. Even if I thank him 24-7 for the rest of my life, it wouldn't be enough. And I could only hope I can be how amazing he is as a person and as a father. KZ, KZ. Okay, so just looking at those um, characters there, uh, it looks like... Although, now I'm looking at these characters right here. Those are Korean. But the ones that were on screen over here, those look like they were Chinese. Oh, well, whatever. we get into this part um i will rewind by the way um that beginning it it had a com has a completely different feel to it than than rolling in the deep did um it it's got a little, like a middle eastern vibe to it <laughs> and i think that's very cool oh, in fact you know what let's go back and listen to that whole thing okay well press the wrong button Okay, so now the band band was in like full drama mode, <laughs> and now 
they're in like a more playful mode. I like I really like this arrangement. <laughs> it's, it's it's really nice and funky, it's funky in spots, and it's, it's just cool. All right, well we'll go back a little bit just just to. See drama. It always gets me how she's able to do rap, how she's able to rap in both Tagalog and English. That blows my mind. I can't even rap in English. <laughs> I mean, that that's just, that's, that's just crazy. That's just dope. <laughs> uh, that's really nice. That's really nice. Like, um, see, the great thing about KZ to me is she's not just a singer. She's a performer. I mean, you, you get like, um, artists that are one or the other a lot of the times. You very rarely get to see one that's like really both. Like, it, it's rare to see that. Like, um... Like, uh, let's see. Who, who would I say is both a performer and a singer? Beyonce. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, Bruno Mars. Obviously Elvis when he was alive. <laughs> Prince. <laughs> And, and there are others. I'm just blanking on them right now. But like, yeah, there's there's others. Like, there's 
there's a good good handful of them. But like, yeah, like they're a lot more rare than like say just a singer or just a performer. Like, an example of just a performer is like say J Lo, Jennifer Lopez. Because let's be honest, she is not a great singer. <laughs> I mean, she's not bad. It's just that's not really her thing. To me, she's a dancer first and a singer, like, third. Because first she's a dancer, then she's a performer, then she's a singer. And uh, that's very apparent if you watch the movie Selena. I know there's, like, a new one on, like, Netflix or something, but, like, or one of those things. But, like, if you watch the older Selena <laughs> movie, that that's the one with J-Lo in it. And uh, she does not sing in that. Yeah, that's right. That's not her singing in that. <laughs> they they got someone else to sing that part, and she's just lip syncing along with it. It's true. It's true. And then there's the your people who are pretty much purely singers, but they sing so well, it's like they're performing. Like say Adele. But then again. When you're like Adele, you don't really need to move. <laughs> All you need to do is open your mouth and sing. But yeah. Anyways, like, there's there's lots of people like that. And, um, like, there was a lot of people on American Idol that um were really, really good singers, but they weren't great performers. So, like, it's just like, hmm. Because that, because of that, there was like maybe a disconnect, and not only that, but like they weren't connecting with the audience either, like emotionally. So there is, there's a reason that they didn't win. Also, I'm pretty sure American Idol was, you know, um, fixed. I'm pretty sure all these like talent show competitions are fixed. Like I'm pretty sure they already know the winner beforehand. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, back to this now, KZ. That was fantastic. Like, uh, this had a completely different feel from the first one. Like, it was mostly drama all the way. This was, like, drama, drama, drama. And it was a different kind of drama than the first song. And uh, I did react to this one on the Wish Bus as well. And uh, once again, the fact that she's able to do this well in a live setting with all these people there, that's wild. All right, let's keep going. this is very smart of her to do in a competition because she started out with two very upbeat energetic songs now she's bringing it back down she may, she may take it to an energetic place like uh in the next part but who knows like i think this is very smart
Beautiful vibrato, actually. Let's go back and listen to that. <laughs> So with that performance, she just, <laughs> she brought it way back down, and it was just very heartfelt, and yeah, um, she was obviously singing in Chinese, I don't know if it's Mandarin or Cantonese, I, I can't tell, I, I just can't tell, like, um, I mean, you could tell that she's singing in some sort of Chinese, because it only shows... Chinese subtitles. With the other performances, you can see Chinese subtitles and 
English subtitles. And then when she was doing the rapping part in Tagalog, you noticed that there were no subtitles at all because they had no idea what she was saying. <laughs> so, yeah. And if you want to know the difference between Chinese and Korean, um, Korean in terms of writing, uh, Chinese looks much more compl complicated. <laughs> like, the Korean alphabet is, like, a very simplified version of Chinese slash Japanese. Very simplified. But mostly Chinese. <laughs> Which is funny because even though the alphabet looks more like very, 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 very simplified Chinese, speaking Korean is a lot more like speaking Japanese than it is like either of the Chinese dialects. And that's that's the extent of my knowledge of uh, Asian languages. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yeah, very good, very heartfelt performance here. Um, she was very much singing within herself, and you know, she made a meaningful emotional connection with with her with the audience here. Like you, you could tell, like they were just enraptured. So was I. Like, um, it's just, it's a great performer, great singer. That can do something like this. Excuse me. I can just um, be able to do all these high energy like numbers and then all of a sudden hit you with this. Now obviously these all these performances were done on different days but still very impressive. The way I'm watching it is more like a mini concert but you know. Like, the way it came up on TV, like, uh, I can just see, like, people who watch this, watch this show live, like, on TV, they were probably just like, what's she gonna do next? That, that, that's the feeling I get, get when I watch her, like, what's she gonna do next, even though I'm about to watch it? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, wonderful job, as always. Just, um, she sounded beautiful in this. Like, she really did. Like, a uh, much more softer tone, you know, singing a little bit more with a mixed voice, mixed, mixed head voice, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, it was just nice. It was very nice. All right, let's go on. Let's see, let's see what else she's got in store. This is see you again in Chinese. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going we're going back to, to when she first starts singing. Oh, yeah. 
I'm assuming that she, she at least has some input on the arrangements here. And if that's the case, she is a, she is brilliant. <laughs> she is a brilliant arranger. I'm sure there's more input from other people, but obviously like, um, I, she obviously has some sort of, some sort of, um, input to do with, um, the arrangement. And, uh, it's brilliant. Cause like, there's, you know, softer, like, um, hard, more heartfelt parts in here. And then there's, like, more upbeat parts. And then, you know, all that stuff. And can I just say, I think she has better flow than uh, the original rapper. I forget who the original rapper is. Because, um, to me, um, the part in the song I always remember is, you know, Charlie Puth singing. That, that that's just me. Other people could be different. Like uh, I remember the first time I ever heard the song, which was the first time I went to see, you know, Fast and Furious Seven. Like uh, when I went to see that in theaters, and I saw, the, and and I I saw like that you know end scene with this song playing, playing in the background. 
and then you just see, like, you see all the, you see the, you see, oh my god, I forgot what the word is. I'm having a brain fart again. You see the, a montage <laughs> of, of, like, all the scenes from, like, the previous movies with, you know, with Paul Walker's character and Vin Diesel's characters, like, you know, just interacting together, and it's just awesome. Brian and Dom. Like, um, yeah. And here and here's the thing. Like, um, I know that Dom is supposed to be like the the main character throughout the series, but to me, it was Brian. And then when Paul Walker died, I was like, no. And then with Fast Seven the last movie that one of the last movies he was in when like i mean he was he, he was making fast 7 they were making fast 7 when he died and it was just a uh, that that last scene got to me like uh i am not ashamed to admit that that there were tears in my eyes when i watched that scene for the first time and the second time <laughs> in theaters but yeah, like that, like it's very, it's it's just a very heartfelt song, period. And um, KZ here just took it to another level. Like she, she ha added all these like little ornamentations. And um, I've noticed something else about her. She's not a big like run or riff person. Like she'll do like little ones here and there. But it's not like, um, it's not like uh, for for a Filipino singer. She doesn't really do a lot of them because I noticed that Filipino singers are Filipino and Filipina singers are very, very good at doing runs and riffs. Very good. But she doesn't really do a lot of them. And, um, like she just, she, she, she knows how to make it tasteful. She knows how to make it impactful. And, um, I really do like when she raps as well because, um, she's got like a different sort of attitude when she raps. And yeah, it's just that was very well done. Very well done. Let's let, let's continue. Oh, she wasn't done. Okay, now she's done. So she so she tricked me there. <laughs> I thought it was done. <laughs> I thought it was done, but it was not done. It's, it's like when you watch Lord of the Rings or Return of the King for the first time. It's just like, oh, it's over. No, it's not. Oh, it's over. No, it's not. Oh, it's over. No, it's not. Oh, now it's over. <laughs> but anyways, let's keep going. Ooh. And now she's playing electric guitar. As if she's not already talented enough. Here we go! Filipino made spotlight a world stage. My mama taught me wrong for right. I was born in the south. Sometimes I have a big mouth when I see something that I don't like. I get it! Driving this road for a mighty long time Paying no mind to the signs Well, this neighborhood's changed It's all been rearranged We left the chain somewhere behind Let's go! Slow down, you're gonna crash Baby, you are screaming, it's a blast, blast, blast Friends, they 
Cause I'll catch you and give you a weapon Well I believe it was right when I said you were wrong You didn't like the sound Now did you? Seriously, she can literally do any any genre. Now, like that was a pure rock song, rock and roll all the way, and she killed it. Like, and and plus, she's she's got a very good voice for rock and roll t- type music, because I mean, like, uh, like especially when she does rock, is her voice has a bit of an edge to it. And uh, if you're gonna do rock, you need to have an edge <laughs> to your voice. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, you guys probably don't know this about me, but um, for the longest time, rock was my favorite genre of music. Now, I'm more of a lover of all types of genres of music. Like, um, it's not just rock. Like, I love pretty much all genres fairly equally. Not all genres, but like, the main genres. I'm not a huge fan of, like, electronica music. But, you know, I respect it. I still consider it music. <laughs> and, um, and, um, I'll tell you, like, the type, the genre of music that has crept up on me, it's, it's country. Because, like, I used to hate country. But now I like country. I like country. It's not my favorite, but I like it. <laughs> like, for the longest time, I just, I was just like, no. Country, no. But now I'm just like, hey. Country's cool. Cause it's because I didn't get country music before. Like, uh, country music is uh, definitely like a storytelling type of genre. Like, all the others are too. But, like, especially country music. So, like, it's just like... It's like, I didn't get that before. Because I was only, like, hearing, like, some of the words. Not, like, all of them. I was only I was only hearing the stuff about, like, the pickup trucks and stuff like that. And then, like, when I heard, like, when I kept, like, when I started actually listening to the lyrics, I was like, okay. Plus, like, country music, sometimes it's not always, like, it's not always the most um, intricate, like, um, type of music. It can be quite simple. But it's, like, deceptively simple as well. Because, like, it's more intricate than you might realize at first. If you don't really listen to it that much. And, um, so, yeah. I've come to really appreciate country music. And I've come to really like it. But anyways. Like, KZ. She can literally do anything. I mean, she's singing, like, in all these, like, different types of genres of music. And she's doing slow pace songs fast-paced songs, mid-paced songs, and she's doing it very well. Like, she really is. 
And only that, she's doing it in, in three languages. She's doing it in in Chinese, English, Tagalog. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, looks like there's probably only one song left. So let's get into it. Great Big World oh, Say something <laughs> This is going to be good Say something oh, So just off the right off the bat, um, this is a slightly more complicated than um, <laughs> the opening to the original "Say Something," like by a great big world, because like you know, literally it's just chord, chord, chord on the piano, like at first when you in the original song. So like yeah. This is this is a nice um this is a nice intro. At the same time it's not too complicated.
well done. Very well done. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about that guitarist. He is really good. He's really, really good. Really, really good. Like, he knows exactly when to get into it, and he knows exactly when to, like, pull back. And, you know, like be, you know, more, more heartfelt, more, you know, pulled back in a way. And like, uh, he knows when to show restraint. Let's just put it that way. And whew, like he, he was really good. Like, I really like that this arrangement was mostly just her singing and a guitar. I wish the whole arrangement was like that. I really thought like, um, adding the drums towards the end there was not necessary I mean I get why they did it trying to fuse a little bit more energy into it but uh, this song doesn't need that this arrangement didn't need that she had me enraptured regardless but like um, I think it would have been better if the drums didn't come in at all during the song but you know I understand why they did it it's not it's not like it took me out of it or anything but like uh i just wish like the whole time was just her and the guitar and like yeah she's got a like and as i keep saying she's got a very nice voice um not a, it's not a soprano voice it's it's more of an alto alto type voice and uh you know if y'all don't know this about me, uh, I love altos. <laughs> like, um, alto is my favorite type of female voice. And tenor is my favorite type of male voice. So, yeah, if you, if you, if you understand that, then you can see that, um, I like voices to be in, like, the same type of range. <laughs> So I, that's why I like high male voices and low female voices. Like, uh, counter tenors, like, they can be hit or miss with me. They can be hit or miss. Contra altos are always a hit with me. <laughs> but, you know, contra alto is still an alto to me. It's just a lower subgenre of alto. <laughs> I mean, technically, that's what a countertenor is, too. It's it's a um, higher subgenre of tenor, but, you know, either way. Just, um, it's very heartfelt, and, um, Casey has this presence about her, like, um, and she seems very natural on stage. No awkwardness or anything like that. It just seems very natural. It just seems like she's in her element. Like, um, out of all the Filipino and Filipina singers I've reacted to, she is clearly the best performer. Clearly. Now, she's definitely not the best singer amongst Filipinos and Filipina singers. Because there are just way too many great Filipino and Filipino singers. And I do believe that. <laughs> like, um... But, yeah. Um, I will say this. I'm not saying that other Filipino or Filipino singers are bad performers. They're not. There's many great Filipino and Filipina performers, like, um... Sarah G. And, uh, Morissette. Katrina Velarde. Like, they're all very good performers. But KZ is a great performer. She, I just don't think she's a great singer. I think she's a very, very good singer. But she's not quite in the great category there. But that doesn't matter because she's got those performance chops. And she's also a rapper. So, I mean, like... You combine all that together, and as a whole, she's one of my more favorite Filipino-Filipina artists. But yeah, 
like mm, just very good like very good overall um don't really have anything bad to say about her it's all good stuff and I think she's a terrific arranger I think she has a certain flavor and uh it's a very good flavor by the way and yeah I'm always I, I like I'm just impressed with her anyways this is already a very long video so I'm gonna end it here and uh, thanks for watching guys